I think most Huddle Sports Code users would be familiar with the idea of clicking a label and activating a code while also labeling that code. I also think a lot of Huddle Sports Code users would be familiar with the idea of having a code activated and then activating a second code which would then label the first code. But what would happen in the scenario where you had one code activated and you wanted the label to go onto the second event that you would activate? That's what we're gonna talk about today. What you're seeing here is one of the early code window designs that really helped to create efficiency within my coding. So you have our events that you'll notice before and we'll have our label that we had before, but you have a couple extra toggle buttons that are over here that are gonna help us do a couple different things. And I'll walk through that process. So the idea was we wanna get this label onto this event, which is corresponding to this event here, but we don't wanna to have to push this event for it to happen. We just wanted to know that when this event's active and this one then becomes active, that it gets the label on top of it. So what it looks like in this case is I activate of this event here, and then I activate this event. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see some activations happen down over here. So as this is going on, these activate, and then you saw this label get pressed, which put the label on event two. To illustrate what happened, we can pull up the sorter and we can see that here's event two, which was a code. And because event one was also down, event two got the label for that event on top of it. And I didn't have to do that. It just automatically did it. So now I'll walk you through the scripting that makes this possible. When we look here, this event activated H1. There's no script within H1. All H1 is doing is working as a toggle to tell label that it needs to do something. So what's gonna happen within this button is that we are gonna have, we're gonna look to see what the state of event is. We know event is here and we're gonna look to see if it's down. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look to see what the state of H1 is. If the event is an active state of one and H1 is an activated state of one, then we're gonna push that button down, which because of the exclusive link that's found right here, will label event two. And that's exactly what we want. We didn't have to do anything and the label automatically happened. The problem is now, is that if H1 continues to stay down and event continues to stay down, it'll continue to label that event multiple times until one of those states is not true. One of those events is not active anymore. So we use these toggle buttons to deactivate H1. The script within deactivate is quite simple. All it's gonna do is it's gonna look to see, is H1 active? And if it's active, it's gonna push itself down. And there's a little bit of a delay on this one. And because if you can see here, there's an exclusive link between these two toggles, that means that only one of these toggles can be uh, down or active at a time. So deactivate will then push H1 up and deactivate will become the active one. Now we need to reset this whole process so that it can happen again. So we're gonna use another toggle, which does the exact same thing. It's gonna look at the deactivate button. If it is active, then it'll push that down. Again, there's a delay here. This has to do with how Huddle Sports Code processes the scripting, these delays. So the big question again comes, Matt, why would we do this? So for my sport in ice hockey, one of the things that we do is we track the player's shifts. Um, and because it's very dynamic and players' shifts average 45 seconds, you have five players on the ice at the time, there's a lot of movement between players who are actually on the ice. And that's something that a lot of hockey video people are gonna do normally is they're gonna track the shifts so they can share those shifts for the players later on. Now, because you're doing that, you're already halfway to getting some really good information. These gray buttons are all codes for your players. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put all those players on the ice. So we've started the play and they're all now on the ice. The play goes on and a shot happens. So we go through our toggles and now all of those labels were just activated in on, on that shot. When we pull that shot from the timeline into a sorter, you can see now that that event shot had all of that information for all those players on the ice labeled in a group and they're actually labeled in a specific order of player one, two, three, four, five. So this is super powerful because now all of a sudden you've actually got a whole bunch more data that you can analyze because you know all the players on the ice for whatever events that you wanted to track that and you also have their shifts. You haven't done any more work. Sports code has done that all for you. This might not directly translate to your sport. So I'd be interested to know 
how you think you could implement this if your sport is different than hockey. Some of the other ideas that I've used this is around game information. So if you want certain information about your game to be added to certain events, then you could put things like the period or the quarter. You could put things like the game number. You could put things like who you're playing in your opposition. So now when you have all these different layers of automated labeling, you can now start to create some really cool outputs from that that can be really data rich. So I hope you enjoyed this look at automated labeling in Huddle Sports Code. If you did, it'd be awesome if you hit that like button. It'd also be great if you wanna continue to keep seeing these types of videos that I'm gonna to try to release on a weekly basis that you subscribe to the channel. Um, you can hit the bell button, it'll let you know when I upload a new video. I'm gonna to try to do that every Saturday here for the foreseeable future. And if you have any comments, please, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or reach out to me on Twitter at Matt Prefi. I'm always up for a good conversation involving Huddle Sports Code. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.